Hi, I'm Jesus, and this video is going to look at some less well-known patterns that a lot of people might not realize exist. And obviously, these aren't secrets either. Some of you are going to know about them. I'm definitely not the first person to find them, but hopefully there'll still be some interesting details in here regardless. And best of all, these are patterns that, provided you're patient, you shouldn't really have to overpay much for. So typically, you'll be able to get the finish of your choice at no extra cost. Anyway, we'll get right into things. So number one, the P250 Crimson Kimono. Now, you might quite legitimately wonder why this skin is called the Crimson Kimono, because it's not terribly crimson here, is it? It looks like it's been left out in the sun for a very, very long time at this point. And this is a notable feature of this skin's pattern, because if you get a bad one, it'll probably objectively look shit. But anyway, let's pop back into my inventory and have a look at another dull grey kimono. And wait, wait a minute, what's this? It seems like there's a a red tide on the march, and I don't mean the Soviet Union's foreign policy, but what I am talking about is the crimson part of the texture working its way up the gun as we change patterns, and once we get to the top, well, I think we're left with a pretty respectable weapon skin. Although there is one caveat on that, the patterns aren't symmetrical. If the close side looks good, the far side probably looks terrible, but hey, you know what, you can only see the close side in game, so who really cares? Anyway, skin number two, the Glock Grinder. So wh what on earth is this texture file meant to be? I, I mean, it it's said to be a steel slide that's been painted using a combination of stenciling and hand painting using oil paints, but that doesn't really answer my question. But anyway, whatever it is, it does still look kind of cool. I kind of get an 80s sci-fi vibe from it. I, I don't know about you, but that's what I get from it. But this is a file that slapped on the Glock grinder from the Vanguard case. Now, these things were apparently once kind of hot, like the Blue Leaf and the Lab Rats once were. Nowadays though, they're kind of semi-forgotten, particularly with newer players, which is why they're in this video. And back in the days when people were briefly interested in these patterns, the most desirable ones were the black patterns like this, but they had two main problems. First of all, there was lots of them, and secondly, they, they don't actually look that spectacular, which put together is kind of fatal to things being expensive, but nonetheless, there are a lot of different ways this weapon can turn out, and maybe one of them will pick your fancy, who knows? But with that, we are up to the next skin, number three, the Orp Paw. Now, I do not know what sort of deranged lunatic looks at an image like this and goes, yep, that's good, let's whack this onto a gun meant to kill people. You know, puppy dogs, cats, murder, the natural combination. But whoever they are, they are clearly a mad genius. I love this texture file. I love the mix of colors. I love that there's so many cool little details like the grenades, like the terrorist and CT outfits. And all this means that when it's slapped on an orc paw, well, there's going to be a lot of different details showing up depending on what pattern you get. In fact, there's even a kind of rare pattern as well. Basically, you might have noticed earlier that there's a golden cat on the texture file that showed up on a few spots on the orbs we've seen already, but the best pattern is when it shows up in the center of the gun like this. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the very best spot is considered to be. There may not be one because it's a bit of a, a novelty pattern rather than something like a case hardened where there's a very clear market for it, but my favorite would definitely have to be this one that Rolfo made a screenshot of. I, I think it looks pretty cool. So yeah, uh, next skin, number four, the M4A4 Daybreak. Now, this is probably my favorite skin. I'm not 100% sure why, but there's just something about it that I really like. Part of it might just be the fact that the M4A4 is such a good looking weapon in the first place, but unlike most M4A4s, this one's finish also depends on a pattern. So this is the underlying texture file. Obviously the colors are, are kind of inverted, either that or the original design concept was a solar eclipse during nuclear fallout, but I think it's just meant to be inverted. And the exact position of the sun on top of the daybreak will vary depending on the pattern ID. Now, the sun will always show up in this section along the top here. And in my view at least, it tends to look best when it's kind of centered to the right, and it tends to look worse when it's stuck in some position where the geometry obscures it. That said though, good patterns are moderately common for this skin, so you shouldn't have trouble finding a well-placed sun. 
The problem instead is going to be the fact that the skin really needs a super low float not to be really scratched and that will generally require times to overpace. So if you want a good looking daybreak, you're going to be absolutely screwed, but at least it won't be by the pattern. Anyway, number five, the Galil Sandstorm. Now, if I'm remembering Three Clicks Phillips video properly, this color scheme was based on a picture that the skin designer took of one of his kids while they're on holidays, which is an interesting story behind an interesting color pattern. We don't normally see beige and purple going together, but not only is it a really nice match on this skin, it's got this hydrographic texture file that's slapped all over it, leading to some pretty wildly varied patterns. Now, most of the time you'll get a mix of beige and purple with this skin. It can vary quite a bit, but it'll still be beige and purple. But there are a few designs which are much more distinctive. So there is a really detailed guide available which goes through this, and I'll link this in the description if you want to know more. But long story short, the patterns range from completely purple, like these, to completely beige, like these, to mostly tan, like these. It's a remarkably flexible skin. I wish we had more like them. And as I said, I'll link that guide in the description because it's a really good guide and it explains everything very thoroughly. And that brings us to our final skin, the Orp Electric Hive. Now, this skin is fairly well known, but I'm including it in this video because I think the fact that it has such distinctive patterns isn't as widely known anymore. And it does have some pretty sick patterns for that matter. So typically you'll have a mix of blue, purple, and orange on your skin. You can see how the colors transition on the texture file. So most of the time you'll be getting a mix of them, but you can also get patterns that are either exclusively orange like this, or almost entirely blue like this, which has a pretty big impact on how the skin looks. The blue patterns are harder to get just like blue gems because there's less blue on the texture file, although Make no mistake, they are definitely not priced like blue gems, do, do not get confused about that. But either way, I think the texture file on this skin leads to some pretty interesting finishes. And hey, maybe you'll actually prefer the design with all three colors on it, because personally, I do. And best of all, you don't have to overpay jack shit for that one. Anyway, that's it for this video. This channel is supported by Loot Bear, the site that lets you rent skins for a fraction of their value. Referral links and a code for a discount on a Prime subscription are in the description. Otherwise though, if you enjoyed this vid, please like, comment, subscribe. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Zeus. Thanks for watching. See ya.